Now, Richo, every Sunday morning, about 11, whether I'm in Melbourne or Sydney, you will find me chilling out with my girls, having a nice brunch, catching up on some gossip, and I find it very, very difficult to ever say no to the corn fritter. Love a corn fritter. I'm Love a corn excited. fritter. A cafe-style corn fritter. Now, we're spending a bit more time at home, so let's learn to make it just really, really nutritionist-friendly as well. Of course, we start with the zucchini because of gotcha. that, don't we? Yep. So I want you just to grate that one. Now, which I've got you to do this, because I actually just want to show how much liquid comes out of this beautiful vegetable. So I didn't need to do this? You didn't really need to do it, no, but I thought, you know... A little bit of exercise as well. I'll have to make one for later on. So that's what this is over here. That's what that is there. Right, so you want to gotcha. squeeze out that extra liquid. There's a lot of liquid in this, Rosie. There is a lot of liquid in quite a lot of vegetables as well. So it's a nice visual just to see how much goodness naturally comes out of vegetables. Now, I've got my egg, which is my binder for the fritter here. So we're just going to whisk that one up. Now, fritters are a great opportunity to add as much nutrition or even smuggle in nutrition, to, especially to the little ones or the big ones. So I've got some hemp seeds here. So I'm going to put about one tablespoon of hemp seeds, nice. really rich in omega-3s, which is what we want to have a nice good brain for the rest of the working week after our nice omega-3 brunch. I like that. Omega-3 <laughs> brunch, we mean uh, bacon you could go in there as well. That would oh. give you omega-3s and, Not and at my fat brunch. and, and uh, protein and all those lovely things. No one orders bacon at my okay. brunch. That's why you're never invited. Okay. So some flaxseed as well. Again, another omega punch. You can barely taste it, which is wonderful. Some nutritional yeast, which is fortified with B12. Really, really tricky for vegans and vegetarians to get it because it's normally from animal products too, so this is great. And, Rosie, I know why I wouldn't come to your brunch, because you would make me drink this zucchini water, wouldn't they you? They actually charge about $12 for a little shot of that yeah, in uh, my local. They wouldn't get away with that in Melbourne, <laughs> I can tell you that. So I've got a nice tablespoon of paprika here. Now, paprika is simply just dry peppers just ground down, and that's why it's got such a pungent flavour. And you only need, you know, a little bit, but it brings a beautiful element to it. We've got some corn here too, of course, one of the main events. You can't call it corn for this unless it's got corn in it. You me. can't at all. Now, I put about half a cup of uh, flour in there. You can just use all-purpose flour. If you are gluten-free, you can just find any of those kind of flours, like chickpea flour, and Potato like that. flour, rice flour, any of those work? There are so many incredible flours out there now. Not so we're just ripping up that basil. Tore it all up. Tore and the it all smell, up. the smell is incredible. Fresh basil like that. That's it. You can use any herb you want. So whenever we use a herb, don't feel you have to use that one. Some people hate coriander. You don't have to use it. Just use something else. They say 5% of the population can't eat coriander because it tastes like soap and uh, and stainless steel. So uh, there's no coriander in here, is there? No, there isn't. And I think it's actually a genetic thing as well. So ask your mum or dad and uh, see what they think of it too. Bit of garlic in there as well. Great nice, anti-bungal. Nice. Very generous amount of salt. Now I'm going to get you to just have a little stir around I can there. mix that around for you, just That's nice it. and gently. On we go with the pan. Now I use a crepe pan because it's got a nice low rim which makes it really easy just to flip anything. So perfect for fritters and things like that. There's also a thermo signal here. And the great thing is that it will actually disappear when the pan is warm enough for you to use. So it's just brilliant for the novice cook especially. Or now, you could put your hand on the pan and see if it's hot enough there. Just forget that happened. Okay. There. Now, if you could pass me a little bit of oil. It doesn't need too much with a good non-stick pan. Yep. But gonna... you want the flavour as well of you the olive oil. You want the flavour. And we're going with savoury dishes, so some nice olive oil. You can use coconut oil for sweet. So we want that just to nicely heat up. I am going to make a bit of a bigger one, because I think what the wonderful thing about cooking is, is you can make cafe-style, restaurant-style quality food. And you just throw it in once. Flip it over. Throw it in once. Flip enough for it 10 over. People. So that just needs two to three minutes on each side, just until it's golden brown. While that one is cooking, I'm going to show you how to just jazz up some sour cream to really impress your buddies. With jazz hands? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> Joe. Looks fantastic. On we go there. Now, of course, you can stack them up as big as you want them to, but I think that's all right for the two of us there. Love it. Now, we're going to have some sour cream, because sour cream is delicious on fritters. But I'm just going to infuse it, which is um, uh, basically a, a, po a posh word for mix some stuff into it. So I'm actually yeah. going to get you to cut some of that beetroot. If you grab one of that. those... I'll just grab one. Just one and chop it up? Just one, chop it up. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of this beetroot uh, brine here. 
just to give it a bit of a colour. And that. we've got That's a bit, fantastic. we've got some chives there too. And I do think we do eat with our eyes, so let's make sure things look delightful. So I'm just gonna put half of the chives into this one because I'm gonna have a bit on the top, uh, nice and fresh to make it again. Look like it got made in a commercial restaurant, but really we've just been at home. Just impressing everyone that we love. Now the beetroot I've just chopped up nice and sort of rough. And this so it adds another extra texture, which is really lovely when you put it in like that. So we'll just mix that one around. I mean, you can have that as a dip just as is. You can add salt and pepper if you want to, but we really don't need to. Looks I'm fantastic. Simply just going to add a nice splodge or splodge, as you would say. Okay. Some extra chives on top. If you can get some of that uh, pepper as well. Oh, we Plus need some pepper on there. generous amount of salt. Now, you could put a couple of poached eggs on there, some fried eggs, some spinach, some avocado, some crispy bacon, some sausage. No. This is the bare foundations. You can add whatever you want on Love here, it. but I really want you to just taste the fritter. Or so. it could be just good on its own like that, which I think is fantastic. That's it. So right, let's have a try. Looks good. I've got a little bit of the sour cream on there as well. It looks fantastic. Lots of lovely flavour in there. Mmm. That tastes great, Rosie. That's why I order it every week. It's just a comfort food. It's delicious. And I just smuggled so much nutrition in, which is what I love. And you know what? We talk about putting a whole lot of things on top of it. I don't think it needs it. I think that's just, just on its own. It's just like that. You can make them smaller and stack them up. or But I think that's enough for one person. Or maybe just me, anyway. I think it's me, actually. <laughs>